Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's stream where I'm going to be having a look at the wonderful new Felt Upright Piano that uh, you just heard then from Nord Keyboards. So, um, yeah, welcome. Let's, who's, let's see who's on line. Musical Reasonair, Reasonair, am I pr pronouncing that correctly? Welcome. Aquatic Borealis, how are you? Nice to see you again as usual. Drew, how are you? Thank you very much. Tune World, Mike, uh, you think Nord is better than Keyscape because I don't own Keyscape though. Um, apples and oranges, but uh, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll, we'll get into some comparisons in a little bit. So let me just tell you a little bit about this sample. So this is the latest piano sample from uh, from Nord that they've released for free for anyone that owns you know a compatible Nord instrument. So I've got this loaded into the Nord Stage, but it'll also work with you know Nord Stage Two. This is a Nord Stage Three. Um, you know all your regular stuff, Nord pianos, etc. So uh, this is the Felt Upright XL sample. So they come in different sample sizes. This is the the largest. We have a look here if we press uh, there you can get some info so you can see i mean the size of the sample is pretty it's amazing how they get so much quality into such a small sample size for these keyboards with their i don't know if it's their special kind of compression or what but it works really really well so um yeah this is the xl version of the sample and uh you know you've got all these things like you know soft release string resonance it's got the most layers and samples 
And so a felt upright, for those of you who don't know, is, is basically, from what I understand, it's an up, upright piano where you put the, um, it's like the practice pedal, it puts a, a layer of felt between the hammers and the strings and it gives a very mellow sound, which is very good for ballads or for, um, you know, any kind of cinematic stuff. You would have heard this a lot. So um, it's very, uh, very mellow. Works really well with some of these reverbs here. So the beautiful reverbs built into the Nord. Um, I've got this currently on a stage reverb, but let's 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 pump it right up to, to a hall reverb and turn that up quite a bit. You can hear it's got some really nice. And then if we turn the reverb completely off, sounds great, even completely dry, you can really hear the sample. So as you can hear, sounds wonderful with heaps of reverb on there. Sounds awesome, just dry as well. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, really detailed sample. So I felt I found some felt pianos there. They lack a bit of dynamic range. So you know, when you really dig in, you it's really muffled as well, and you just don't get much back from them. But um, what I, I really like about this one is I found that it's just it still has plenty of so when you dig in a bit harder, so you still get that little bit more brightness, just enough that you can really bring out certain notes and accent certain notes. And I find that, you know, it's really important when, you, when you're playing a felt piano, you don't want it completely muted. If you did want it more muted, you can always use these, um, this section here, which is like, the, it's like a piano filter section and uh, you can just put it on soft mode. So if I just cycle through these, you've got soft, uh, mid, bright, and this is sort of, it's sort of like an EQ filter thing uh, preset for the piano, and you can use this on any piano sound in the Nord. So if we leave it off, we put it on soft, you can hear it's really muted. So even that, if you dig in really hard, you don't get any bite to the sound. So if you want that, that's cool. Mid brings out more of those mid-range timbres. And what I was, I was just messing around with this before, and what I found was really cool is if you take a, a felt piano sound, which is generally quite dark, but put it through the bright filter setting, it brings out some really nice resonances in the, in the sample and the sound. So let me just play it, play it with it off. And this is just how it sounds by default. I'll put a tiny bit of reverb on there. Great. Now, if you put it on the bright setting, but on the felt piano, you 
you sort of get a, a more traditional upright piano sound, but it's not as bright as a traditional upright piano sound. So you get something in between, like a felt piano and a traditional upright sound, which is really cool if you want to do some, you know. And you just want a little bit more cut to the sound without it being too bright. So if we take to the other extreme now, what I was saying before, and put it on the soft setting, this is great for your real cinematic sound. So this with a bit of reverb, you can get real. It doesn't matter how much you dig in, the sound always stays mellow. So this is sort of similar to when I've played felt pianos, sampled felt pianos, um, not on Keyscape. I'm not sure if Keyscape actually has felt piano in it. I don't think it does off by the top of my head, but I'm, there's a lot of other brands that do felt pianos that are very popular for cinematic stuff. And what I felt with them is the only, I don't know if it's a problem, it's just the way they've been designed. It doesn't matter how much you dig in, you, you never get that brightness. So if you want that effect though, sometimes it's great for the cinematic stuff. Just put it on this soft setting here. It doesn't matter how much you dig in, it's always gonna remain quite mellow as well, so. So, you covered, now if I, if I turn that off. You get that full dynamic range back again, which is just, I think they've nailed it. They've really got it the perfect amount from really mellow to just enough bite to accent something. So as far as felt pianos go, this would definitely be right up there with, um, with my favorites, I think. So if I was doing, so when I do cinematic stuff in future, when I do any kind of scoring, especially things like a lot of, um, you know, um, background music uh, for for things like commercials, TV commercials, or things like, you know, um, if you're scoring uh, any kind of, you know, drama, TV drama stuff. It's just, I think this is just such a great sound. I reckon it's going to make its way into a lot, a lot of my stuff. So um, let me get to some of these questions here. Quarty Borealis says, new as in it's a downloadable plugin. Uh, new as in it's a, so for Nord, uh, if you own a Nord, you can download it from the website as um, it's, a, it's a, like a package, a special Nord sound file. So you can only use it in Nord keyboards, but um, yeah, it's free. All the Nord sounds that they release are always free for Nord owners. So you can just put it into whatever keyboard you own. Uh, do I make my timbres? Uh, are you talking about in the Nord? Uh, yep, in the synth section I do. And, and I'll sort of, you know, tweak everything else on the piano section and that'll tweak the EQ and everything else. But um, if that's what you mean. Aquatic Borealis says that's a pretty nice keyboard. Uh, it doesn't play like a fully weighted piano though, right? Well, this is the, um, this is the Stage 3 Compact version so it's 73 um, waterfall action keys so they've got no lip here so they're great for playing you know organ glisses and stuff like that and yeah it's kind of like a semi-weighted action so the beauty of it is the whole thing weighs about nine kilos 
So, you know, it's the super portable and it's got all the same insides as a, the, the bigger Nords as well. Same controls, everything's identical. The only thing that's different is the, is the keyboard action. So, yeah, it's not a fully, fully weighted. If you take something like this, so I've got the Nord Stage 2 over here, the 88 version, so that's got a full hammer action to it, which is great, but of course it weighs a lot more. So yeah, this is sort of like a, it's like a semi-weighted action, somewhere between a, it's, it's more substantial than a synth action, but it's not as heavy as a piano action. But as you can hear, like the problem I find with a lot of synth actions or semi-weighted actions is that the velocity response is really, the curve is really unnatural. So when you're playing from soft to loud, it's a very different experience and it even sounds very different recorded or for the listener than if you're playing from soft to loud on a, on a weighted action. But uh, they've really nailed the velocity response in this particular one. So I find that, you know, you can play, you know. sounds you know just as natural as playing on a weighted action so it's good it's you know obviously any any time you take you have anything less than a fully weighted action it's going to be a compromise for certain sounds but the beauty is on this too if you're playing clavinet sounds or synth sounds or organ especially the action is just so good it's amazing it's perfect so for a portable sort of compromise in between i think this is this is fantastic There'd be a lot of um, synth-weighted actions that I wouldn't dare attempt what I'm attempting today on piano. Because it just wouldn't sound pianistic. It'd sound like you're playing piano on a synth. So for a upright piano, a felt upright piano, I think they've just absolutely nailed it. So very, very cool. But I'm going to have a look at a few of the other pianos that uh, in here. The beauty is with the Nord Stage 3, this one, it's just got so much um, memory in it that you can load a whole bunch of pianos into it. So I've got some other ones in here too. So we can have a look. At the moment, I've got no, and that's the synth section, I can turn that off. I've got absolutely nothing running effects-wise. I've got a, t I mean, a tiny smidgen of reverb that you can hardly even hear just to add a little bit of space, but even turning that off sounds fantastic. Um, but no EQ, nothing. Uh, this is just completely dry. So I'll just catch up on this chat and then we'll have a look at a few of the other pianos. Uh, Quantic Borealis says, I was looking at the new Phantom, Roland Phantom 08. Ah, that's the new, is it the more sort of affordable range of the Phantom series they've just released? I saw that came out. I haven't uh, seen any here locally yet, but um, I'll check them out when they arrive. You are! Good to see you back again. How are you? <laughs> you are says... Muted piano uh, with soft reverb is so expressive. All the better in the right hands, but you can pull off a, a lot with little talent with that sound. Yeah, it's it's a very, very popular sound. I think it was probably overused a touch in some um, cinematic stuff. You know, there was a lot of that, uh, a lot of that. Uh, you know, you put it on with a bit of bit of reverb and um, play lots of fifths. The whole, uh, you know. That sort of vibe. 
that's uh, that got a little bit overused. But I'm I'm really liking felt piano for for you know even jazz stuff now. You know you don't often hear a lot of jazz played on upright piano, especially muted felt upright piano. But I mean it sounds great. And take you know let's take some jazz ballads. You know something like you know. That's, you could definitely do a jazz album with that. It sounds great. All righty. Who else is online? Oh, hello again. Can, oh God, I'm going to mispronounce your name again today, aren't I? Kana, 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 Kana. Uh, I'll go with that. Joel Cena. Oh, good to see you, mate. How are you? Let's get a, let's get a shout out to Joel. Joel, for those of you who don't know, Joel's a, a very talented uh, saxophone player here in Melbourne. We play together quite frequently on the scene here. I do believe Joel's uh, got some new material in the works, so make sure you go and uh, go and check out uh, Joel's stuff on his socials. You are. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad. Thanks for tuning in for the Take uh, take 5, Vid. It was good to see you there. So for those of you who don't know, I did a video with the uh, sequential... Do this back to front here. There we go. This is the, uh, the sequential Take 5 polyphonic five voice analog synth was my last live stream so had a bit of a play through that that's uh, uploaded on my youtube channel so it'll still be there and speaking of youtube channels feel free if you haven't already please like this stream subscribe tell your friends if they're interested in synthesizers pianos jazz funk anything of that nature <laughs> uh Kano says good to listen stella before sleep ah oh, very good good night sleep well i'll uh you know you pick the right stream for some soothing uh sleep type music with a with a felt piano quite boreal uh borealis zoics they say ensure, the, <laughs> ensure those puppies for 10 10 10 million wow geez i don't know about that is that patch good for bolero and salsa um look i i think you could play anything with anything but uh, i mean i've always played when i play salsa sort of latin music in general i tend to go for a brighter piano sound so um we'll have a look let's let's check out some of the other pianos in the north i've got pretty much all of them i think bar one i had to delete one upright piano to fit that this uh full excel version of the felt piano in but apart from that i've got most of them on here so let's let's have a listen to them while we're here um so p frank have a listen to some of the others and you tell me what you think. Tell me tell me what your uh, your favourites are and which one you think would be best for Latin music. Uh, you are says, yes, simplicity is always gorgeous. Fifths sound great. They do. Felt piano and fifths, they really lend themselves. Major sevens, minor sevens, all the classics. Ah, Mauricio. Hello from Brazil. Hello from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Good to see you. All right, so that's the felt upright. Let's, uh, so that's the latest, latest and greatest from Nord, as far as their latest sample. Let's wind it back now to, I mean, should we, should we stick with um, upright pianos, or do you want to have a listen to the grand pianos as well while we're here? So we can just scroll through them all here. So let's just stick with some of the other uprights. I've got all of them, I think, bar one. So felt upright, that's the latest. Black upright, so here's a... So you can hear that's a much, much brighter sound. It's definitely got that sort of slightly phasey upright piano quality. So that'd probably be closer to what I would go for for a Latin type thing. I reckon that'd fit really well. 
Latin music sounds great on upright pianos too. So. Actually, but what I would do is, apart from getting rid of some of this reverb, if I was playing this Latin music or anything, anything with um, where you really want to clean up the sound a bit. So there's this soft release function on Nords, and it's it really does change the sound a bit. So check this out. So this it basically just changes the the release portion of the envelope. So this is with it on, which is great for ballad. You can hear it's got quite a natural long release. But if you turn it off. You can hear it's much more abrupt. So you can, if you want it to just sort of cut through and be a lot more rhythmic, that's good too. Put it back on. You can hear it's got a bit more release to the sound. So if it was playing something like Latin music, you know, so probably have it off. Is there a difference between the mellow upright and the felt upright when you say uh, simply level the attack on the mellow? Sorry, when you can simply mellow the level of the attack on the mellow upright to match the felt? I don't think this is the well. That's an interesting thing. Well, we can check them out. They're both on here. Um, as from what I can tell, you can't actually change the attack portion of the piano. So the, in the Nords, the piano section, it's not like a synth section where you've got full uh, editability over you know everything. This, it's a very, uh, it's more of a closed system. You've got some control. You can, as I said, the release portion, you can you can edit. You can edit things like string resonance, pedal noise, and there's these filters here. But it's more of like a, a dedicated um, piano simulation system. So as it's not just a basic sample player. It's, it's, there's more to it going on. And um, that's why, you know, you can get such amazing, rich-sounding samples, which have a seemingly small sample size. So I, I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it's strictly sample based, if there's other stuff going on, because you've got, as I said, like string resonance, uh, which is very cool. So for those of you who don't, don't know about string resonance, uh, also called sympathetic resonance. So what that is, on a, you can hear it really well on a grand piano. So basically, if, if you hold down a note on a grand piano and you lift that damper off the strings, that string will actually resonate when you play other, other notes. So it just adds to the harmonic richness of everything. So for instance, especially like if I hold down this note here, or oh, let's let's just pick pick that note. So if I play it really softly without so you can't hear that, but I play some other notes. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear it's actually sympathetically resonating the virtual strings essentially of that. And that makes a huge difference to the the overall sound and how, you know, the richness and the harmonics and how each note interacts with other notes and stuff like that. So, you know, if you, as I said, if you just hold down the notes. You can hear all the harmonic, all the harmonic series ringing out. So that's really, really cool. So yeah, so as I was saying, it's not just a, a sample player, like, you know, the, the synth section or whatever. Um, it's 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 a lot more going on there, so you can't really edit the attack portion and just treat it like a synthesizer. But that being said, let's have a look at um, oh, let's have a look again. Okay, there we go. So let's have a look at um, you said the the mellow piano. There's the mellow upright there. So. It's just clipping a bit. Let me just take that back. I mean, it's a very, you can hear tonally. 
it's a very different sound. So it's similar, but mellow uprights. You can still hear that's not really, it's not dampened in any way. I mean, you could try to simulate it, maybe put it on the soft setting. And then we can go back to the belt. That's a bit closer. But the felt, the felt piano is definitely different. The felt piano is, it's mellower when playing soft. You get that bite when you dig in, but the whole thing is still muted. And it's just got a more, it's just a different sound. I don't know how to, how to describe it. It feels different to play too. That's, that's the other thing. It's one thing like for everyone listening, what, it, what you perceive the sound to sound like. It's also a different experience when you're actually playing the sound and the, the finger to sound connection is a big thing too. So, the, I mean, the mellow is great, but it's like, if I wanted to play, let's, let me just play something. So, in, in a song context, let's say, you know. Yeah, it's just, I, it's different. They're both great. Just, it's nice to have options, I guess. The felt the felt one feels, it just feels, something about it feels more cinematic when you put reverb to it. That's, it's just brighter. There's more to it, more in the mellow one. Yeah, it's sort of just, yeah, it's different. Cool. All right. Let's catch up on this chat. No worries, Pete Frank. Yawa says, response to the attack, great. Yeah, it does. That's the mellow upright. Get rid of some of that reverb. Felt has a narrow stereo image and a stronger low end. Yeah, you're right. It does seem to have a more sort of one dimensional in, in one way, but in a good way. It doesn't sound flat. It just sounds more, maybe more focused. Maybe it's closer mic'd. This, this is the mellow one. It sort of sounds a bit. Don't know, maybe more like you're in the room. With no reverb. Yeah, it's cool too. All right, so some of the other sounds, just to give you, so we did the black upright, honky tonk, well, I mean, obviously that's gonna be, you know. Very different to what we're looking at today. Uh, the queen upright. I'm doing all these with reverb off. That's cool. Probably other ones I prefer, but it's, it's interesting. Now the rain piano. When someone says, I need an upright piano on my track that sounds like an upright piano. Um, if, you know, if, I, if I'm gonna use the Nord for the track or live, this is the sound I use, cause it's got that real. sounds like an upright piano it's very because I mean you get a really good upright piano like a really perfectly designed upright piano and perfectly mic'd there's not a huge difference in sound you know what I mean between that and a grand piano it's different but when people say upright piano they have a certain perception of what they want the sound to sound like and in my experience I find that you know people say I want an upright piano on this track that's the sound that they want, so, you know. That 
that's that sort of sound. So that's sort of my go-to straight ahead. Not honky-tonk, but slightly detuned upright piano. And it's, again, really nice soft. And really nice bite too. So obviously, pianos, like, you know, all things, you've got different flavors of the same thing. So lots of different flavors of uprights. So if I'm using um, the Nord, so this this has a certain upright piano sound. Keyscape's got a killer upright piano sound as well. It's just completely different. So they're, they're just completely different. Like, you know, if you're talking about a Rhodes, for example, you know, you can have 10 Rhodes pianos and they're all completely different. So it's the same thing. It's just the particular piano that they sampled for Keyscape. Absolutely brilliant. Works fantastic on some tracks. Some tracks people want a piano that sounds more like this. So it's great to have options. So getting back to that thing where people say, um, you know, is Keyscape better or is the Nord better? They're just different. They're both fantastic. They're both awesome. They're just different flavors. So, you know, they, they've sampled different pianos. I mean, the, the one on the, the, the grand piano, for instance, that Keyscape used, I mean, that's a Yamaha grand piano, you know, and the, there's Steinways and Kawais and all sorts of stuff in the Nord. So it's just, it, they're different pianos. So um, to say, you know, is something better or, or whatever, it's, it's sort of apples and oranges. So they're just different, different products. Both cool in their own right. Um... Tune World says, give me your top five piano upright plug-in ever. And does it match the stages piano or in your eyes is better? Um, upright piano plugins, I tend to go with, uh, oh, hang on, upright piano. I, do you mean felt upright or do you mean just general upright, like, like this kind of upright? So if we're talking about this kind of upright sound, um, my go-tos are either, so this, the Nord, Keyscape, or the uh, there's one by Spitfire, Spitfire Audio, do a, a good one as well. Um, I can't remember which one they've got. So many, <laughs> so many different pianos. Um, I'd have to look it up, but I, I can't remember what it's called. It's not one of the real super affected ones, like uh, you know from. It might be one of the ones from Abbey Road. I can't remember, but anyway, it's just it's just a different one. So I'll put it in the I'll put it in the comments afterwards. Um, so they'd be my three sort of go-tos for that. If you're talking about felt uprights, I, as I said, I don't think Keyscape's got a felt upright, but as far as felt uprights, um, my favorite now is the Nord. Uh, if I had to go software, it would be, there's a few felt uprights um, that Spitfire Audio make that I really dig. So I think they're, you know, they're pretty good. Um, they're sort of my go go-to felt uprights as well. Um, I have tried Arturia Piano, and I have tried Addictive... Oh, Addictive Keys. Yes, I have tried both of those. Yeah. Um, I, they're not for me, but not to say they're, you know, not good products. I just... I, I didn't um, really connect with them as much uh, as these. So I just, just felt... These felt right to me. Aquatic Borealis says he has the C7 Grand from IK Multimedia, also the Arturia Piano version 2. Unicorder is pretty nice, felt upright right plugin from Native Instruments. Ah, you're right, sorry, I forgot. How could I forget Unicorder? Unicorder is fantastic, um, especially for uh, really affected sounds. So that's, that's what I love about it. I mean, the, the raw samples are fine, but where I think it really shines is it's just some of the effects, how you can get all these cool tape, things going and, and really spatial sort of, you know, um, yeah, really, really cool, cool effects. So yeah, Unicorder is, is amazing. Um, and it, it's got a lot of scope. If we're not talking about just playing it as a sample, if we're actually talking about really sound design more so, um, I think Unicorder is awesome. I've, I've definitely used that a fair bit as well. P. Frank says, I love how nice and diplomatic I am. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I just look. I, I think anyone that's doing anything in this space is is doing great work. Like you know, we need good instruments to express ourselves musically. So you know, I think it's all good. I've got. It's like everything's personal preference. Like you know, there's how something sounds and whether you like the way something sounds, and there's also how something feels to play. So for me, it's got to have both. It's got to sound good, and it's got to feel good to play. So it's got to really, you know. 
if it, if it doesn't have that connection for me, if I don't feel connected to the instrument, it doesn't matter how good it sounds. And there's that's the problem with, I found a lot of a lot of products is that they sound, if you just take them on a, a from a listener perspective, if you're just listening to them, they sound fantastic. But when you sit down to play them, it doesn't feel like you're playing an instrument. It just feels like you're triggering a, a, a computer, you know, and, and it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in I don't care how good something sounds. If, if you've got to play it as a performer and as a musician, if that connection between you and the instrument isn't there, it doesn't matter how good it sounds. I'm, I'm not interested because it's got to feel right. You know, I'd rather play something that feels really great to play and immediate and responsive and expressive if even if the sound is you know not as maybe perfect for lack of a better word as some some samples and uh you know because there's some sample i've played some sample libraries out there and i'll be diplomatic now i'm not gonna not gonna name them but you know from a, a quality of sample perspective they sound they're very good very high quality but they just feel so from someone who's grown up playing piano and keyboards my whole you know my whole life they just don't feel right to play they they don't they don't respond like a piano or a keyboard or or anything really they just feel unnatural to play and uh, that that just kills it for me so and then you get products you know like this stuff and keyscape and so forth that nail both they sound amazing and they feel like an instrument to play and then then you're happy and it, it all works. Yeah, definitely a quality board. You, you definitely need to have low latency when you're playing playing any kind of keyboard instrument. Um, how does the connection work, dynamic and response mainly? Uh, do you mean the connection between playing and the sound? You know, it's um, it's a lot of things. Yeah. So one is the latency. So which is the you know between when you press a key and when the sound comes out. And you'd be surprised how many, you know, well-known keyboard libraries have, haven't got that right. And, and what I mean by that, it's not that it's just bad across the range, like there's a delay. It's that sometimes I've found that ones have a delay depending on velocity. So when you play quietly, for instance, it might be really, really quick. But when they've sampled the, the, the harder attacks, they've put in a few more milliseconds of, of, well, it's just ended up that way that there's been a bit more latency. So... You can be playing and it feels fine and then you go to really dig in and, and there's this sort of, oh, hang on a minute, it's not as immediate and that's the last thing you want is when you're really digging into a sound for it to be less immediate. You want it to be more immediate, if anything. So that's, you know, that can be bad. And also, yeah, just dynamic response, you know, how... And of course, this is, this is where it gets a little difficult because especially with software plugins, everyone's going to be playing it from a different keyboard, you know. Some people are going to have great pianistic controllers other people are going to have really you know little tiny 25 note synth action things and and it's got to try to translate across all of them and velocity response is so important so there's a couple of you know companies have got around that in different ways you've got companies like spectrosonics for instance have um you know they've got a whole bunch of presets so they've they've tested that and they've come up with ideal velocity curves for every Oh, well, heaps of keyboards. So pretty much, you know, you can choose your controller, you can choose whatever, whatever you're playing it from, and they will, they'll have a preset that feels good for that, that keyboard. Then there's companies I've seen, I think like Native Instruments have done stuff where, you know, you can create your own custom curve by playing the keyboard. So you just noodle for 20 seconds or whatever, and it'll figure out how, you know, you're playing the velocities and it'll sort of adapt it to that. So that's another way to do it. Whatever you do, you have to figure that stuff out because if you play with the wrong velocity, it's going to feel, you know, the wrong velocity curve, it's going to feel wrong. And then there's just some controllers that unfortunately have really bad quality curves. And, you know, I've played some controllers that doesn't matter how, doesn't matter what you do in software, you just can't, you can't polish it, you know, you can't fix it. So, and it just feels horrible. But, um, you know, there's plenty of good stuff out there as well. Uh, and that's the beauty of something like hardware like this, like the Nord or whatever, is that the keyboards are all from the factory. They're all calibrated. They're all, you know, p perfectly calibrated to the samples and the sounds and that. So it's not going to vary. It is what it is. So you sit down on a Nord and it's how they intended you to play it from the factory. Like, you know, like any hardware synth. 
So that's one advantage of hardware. So let's have a quick uh, oh, romantic upright. There's one more. So, I mean, a lot of these are, are, are similar. Blues, sweet. It's a bit, bit more attack. Saloon upright. <laughs> There's some, you know. Quite honky tonk. Then we're on to electric pianos. Right, so let's go back to grand pianos. So my I've got a couple of go-tos. So people people often ask what are my go-tos on the Nord? So they are there's an old, an older sample now. It's the Studio Grand 2, which I believe is a Yamaha. It's not one of their latest samples, but I find that it just translates really well in a whole bunch of situations. So here's another thing about pianos. I could talk about pianos, digital pianos all day, but basically, you know, there's one thing for a piano to sound great in an ideal environment. So we're playing it in stereo. We've got stereo monitoring. We've got, you know, everything is is great. We've got really good quality cans on or studio monitors or perfect PA system or whatever. That's ideal. But, I mean, the Nord is a live instrument as well. You know, it's not just for the studio. It's designed to be out there and taken on stages and gigs and that. And the amount of times you have to play through a PA that's horrible or might be in mono or you have to monitor in mono and, you know, the the you don't have full range speakers. You've only got, you know, eight inch cones in the in the monitor speakers or something and it's just you don't always have this perfect performing environment right so this is the interesting thing about piano samples you can have an amazing piano sample that's a zillion gigabytes and is just in the studio you can't tell it from a real thing then you get it in a in a really horrible live situation where you're playing in mono through really really crappy system and it's going to sound pretty awful. You're going to end up with, you know, you can end up with phase cancellation and everything where it's just, it, it all turns into a mess. So this is the interesting thing. I found, for my money anyway, the sample that works the best is it's one of the older, I think it's Studio Grand 2, one of the older Yamaha samples. And it's just, you know, it works. It sounds great, you know, in a pristine environment. So... But if you have to play it in mono or whatever, it still translates really, really well. So that's a good option. My other one, my other favorite is one of the newer ones, this white grand. So this is really good. So, you know, um, and this works really well if you've got a beautiful, a perfect system, this really shines. So this just sounds killer. Right up to and all the way down to, you know, it's just, it's really beautiful, so. So as you can hear, that's just, it sounds really good.
that's just one of those samples that I just I can just sit there with headphones on and, and play it play it all day it just sounds amazing Etc. You know, it's just it's just super expressive from those super pianissimos all the way up to your just sounds fantastic. So. Big fan, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, their Royal Grand 3D, this one's really popular. Works really well, you know, obviously in stereo. Gives you a very sort of open sound if you're playing in stereo, it's really nice. beautiful sound as well cool all right let me uh, catch up on this chat There's a few new things have popped up here so let's have a look um josh james how are you mate says i bought the roads uh from hammer hammer and waves the other day as it was on sale and have been enjoying it's not quite keyscape but it's better than a lot of roads plugins and some of the price cool matt i don't think i've checked that one out so i will have to have a look Uh, Josh James, I'm intrigued to see how their upright sounds. Ah, we just went through a lot of uprights, mate. You must have. Is there one particular one? Did you mean the the felt upright, the new one? I might come back to that and have another look. Yoa says, "What audio interface do I use in the studio? I use a. Uh, it's quite old now. It's a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 as my main interface. It still runs on uh, in the interface. It still runs on Firewire. Would you believe? So I've got dongles going into dongles going into dongles." to make it work with the current uh, Max, but you know, it does work for now, I think. I don't think it's gonna work when I eventually upgrade to an M1 processor, because they don't, I don't think they support uh, the Firewire thing. But for now, it works. So, uh, and then that's going into, because I have all of these synths behind me connected in, uh, that's expanded via ADAT to a Focusrite Claret uh, 8 Pre. So I've got another 8 preamps. Uh, for all these synths behind me. So I've got eight on the focus right, uh, the Sapphire eight on the on the Claret, and then I've got a little submixer up there too for some of those, uh, the lesser used synths. So they're all going into one channel, uh, stereo pair. I hope that makes sense. But um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's done me well, but I think when it comes time to upgrade, I'll have to look at uh, probably getting another Claret or something to, to join my eight pre there. Yawa says, and do you play any computer plugins live? Your hardware keys are amazing. Oh, thanks, man. Um, I have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've used a lot of plugins live. I've used Keyscape live. I've used um, a lot of the uh, the Scarby bass stuff um, live, as well as the Trillion bass stuff from Spectrasonics. I've used, what else have I used? Yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff. So um, it really depends on the gig. See, I find live using a laptop, it's one of those things that, you know, when I was saying before about, perfect environment so if you've got a big tour you know if you're playing a stadium or you're playing a massive theater or something and you've got beautiful stereo sound great quality engineer good quality monitoring all of that kind of thing then um yeah you know using a laptop using those kind of sounds you, it's going to sound really really good but you know so a lot of the times you know that that'll be that'll be one gig and then the next gig you'll be in a in a bar that's you know with uh, really horrible sounds and people 
falling over, spilling beer on your on your equipment. So you definitely don't want. Uh, I, I kind of try to not take a laptop in that situation. I just find it's more stuff to potentially uh, <laughs> potentially go wrong. <laughs> Aquatic Borealis. Yeah, I mean, they're not cheap. They're, they're definitely uh, like a flagship instrument for sure. Yawa says, uh, Unreal Advisory Velocity and your chosen MIDI controller. Oh, that's good, man. I'm glad it was helpful. Never considered this. I can see uh, why modules have keyboards in them. They're already tuned to the engine. Yeah, in a lot of cases they are. I mean, a lot of cases it really doesn't matter as far as... Um, you know, some of these analog synths that don't even have velocity and stuff, they're literally, the keyboards are just dumb controllers, if you know what I mean. They're not, nothing's tuned, it's just on-off, they're just on-off switches, essentially. But that's another interesting thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about this connection between the instrument and, and the sound, right? They're playing in the sound. So, there's something I find, playing a synth as opposed to playing a synth module, I just like the immediacy of I just feel like I'm playing the instrument if I'm playing a something with with keys on it I find if I'm playing a module like if the module's sitting over there and I'm triggering it from here okay it works it sounds the same and everything but it's just I, I just I, it's a different workflow it just feels a bit different for me so you know if I've got the luxury of space which I kind of don't anymore but um I do like to have I do like to have a a keyboard attached to you know something like you know the ARP Odyssey or the the Moogs or the, the Take 5 and that. It's just nice to be able to... But obviously, you know, if you want to have a whole rack of gear, a whole bunch of different sounds and want to control it all from one keyboard, space-wise, that's fantastic. And, you know, just depends on what you want to do. But um, that works great in the studio. Live, you know, I don't want to have to worry about modules and lugging stuff around and cable cabling and all that. Live, I just want to be able to take one thing out of the case, plug in a power cable, plug in an audio cable, and I'm away. I don't have to worry about controllers and power and then modules and power and MIDI cables and all of that stuff. It's just, you know, I think it really depends if you play live or if you just do studio. So yeah, modules in the studio work great, but it's just a different experience. P. Frank says, do you mind recommending a good 61 to 73 MIDI keyboard with the right velocity response? Semi-weighted, not too light a to touch piano feel and waterfall a waterfall so when you say waterfall waterfall means like these curved solid you know curved key ends here so there's no lip so they're good for playing organ if you're looking for that in a um in a controller i'm not actually sure if that exists in waterfall keys I mean, if, if you're not talking waterfall keys, there's there's some good options out there. Um, yeah, there's great Novation make killer controllers. Um, yeah, Novation, uh, Native Instruments, uh, you know, yeah. They're probably, I, I like, you know, I've got mainly Novation stuff controller-wise. G'day, Wreckington. Yeah, the stages are cool, man. Yeah, the white grand is amazing. Let's go back to that, actually. That's <laughs> so nice, isn't it? What does the softened attack sound like with the white grand? Oh, you mean the, the filter, the soft filter. All right, let's put it on. All right, give me a song. What song should I play? Just turn my mic off.
There you go. I may have cheated and added in a few little other sounds and things there. That's off my little um, custom, my live setup that I use. So I've got this set up. So when I'm playing playing live, I have my um, my main grand piano here. Turn that off. I've actually got that usually connected to a foot pedal. So got my piano. And then if I want to layer that with like an electric piano, get that uh, the DX7 vibe, I've got that set up on panel B. So if I want to layer them together, I love it. I just love that sound. You know, I am a child of the 80s, 90s. Over here, I've got my pad sound. Oh, not that. There we go, that. And that's on uh, usually on a foot pedal, which I don't have connected up at the moment, so I can just bring in. to cut off mapped to the mod wheel so and that's pretty much my live setup for for you know for that sound those basics of the Nord 3, stage 3, is that there's no sound cut off if you do stuff. So if I want to go from that to just piano on its own, for instance, some DX7 now, just because I can. I was enjoying that sound. Sorry, I got a bit of chat to catch up on here. What's happened? All right. Uh, da -da 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 All right. Wreckington says, uh, the Axis Virus keyboard has amazing keys, believe it or not. They do. Hey, the Virus always had a really great feeling keyboard, didn't it? Actually, there's a really good site that you can go to where it lists, someone's compiled a, a list of uh, basically like every keyboard ever made, pretty much, and what keybed it uses. So whether it's like a custom in-house keybed or whether it's um, like something like, you know, the DX7 or, or whatever, um, or if it's actually made by a company like, you know, Fatar or something like that, who have actually made, made a keybed for, for a particular brand. So it's really cool because you can go, oh, I really like the keybed of this, this keyboard. What is it? And then you go, oh, right, okay, that's a whatever. And that's also used in, you can see all the other keyboards that it's actually used in. So very handy, actually. I learned a lot from that side. <laughs> oh no worries you are you're welcome hey indeed sapphire pro 40 just sold it loved it yeah it was great it's it's still great i mean you know i've been using this i don't even know how many years 10 years more less i can't remember a long time and it's still so good Uh, do I use main stage live? I have, I do from time to time, depending on the, if I need something that's, you know, um, like really intricate and, you know, for a, a, for a show or for a, for a tour or something that's got the same um, sort of set list every night for like a patch, you know, and it's a real patch 
fest with heaps of layers and splits and stuff. Yeah, I mean, main stage is, is pretty cool for, for certain things like that, you know. But you can do a lot with hardware as well. It just, it just depend, totally depends on the gig. Bonnie, nice to see you. How are you? Uh, Bonnie says, what do you do to control volume for different presets for gigs? Well, what you should always do is try to have all your volumes, your preset volumes sorted so they're, they're relatively similar. Um, so yeah, that's one thing you want. When you're playing live, you don't want massive jumps in the volume from one sound to the other. So always program them in the studio first at home so they're all relatively flat um, volume to volume. And then I use just a, um, a Yamaha FC7 I found is really good as a CV pedal, like a volume pedal. Uh, well, it's not actually a volume pedal. It's just a like a, yeah, you plug it into the control pedal input on your synth and then I use that to control layers so volume layers so for instance here if I go to um I was going to yeah yeah so you know like synth synth pads or strings or brass or whatever else I want to layer in I use that on a pedal um yeah main stage is cool it's definitely it's it's about you know the best of the the computer module type programs uh, da, 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 da. What studio monitors am I using? I'm using Yamaha HS80s, or I think they're the HS8s or the HS80s now, or something. I can't remember which ones they're called, but they're the eight-inch Yamaha ones. But I'm not actually using them at the moment. Um, yes, as someone said there, Josh James. Yeah, you're right. The, everything you're hearing is coming straight out of my. Um, it's actually going out of one Focusrite interface into another Focusrite interface. So I've got my entire studio coming out of one interface and that's just going into my streaming PC that I'm using to stream on. So everything's coming straight into that uh, digitally. Oh, thank you, P. Frank. Yes, yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? The soft filter on the white grand. You are. Love from Ireland. Oh, awesome. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Cool. Ah, Lucas, nice to see you. Was it an anomaly lick? Uh, I don't, not that I'm aware of, unless I uh, subconsciously ripped it off. What, which camera and stand do I use for the overhead view? Uh, that is a Lumix uh, uh, GX9, I think, uh, by the top. Uh, yeah, L Lumix GX9, and uh, I've just got on a microphone stand actually, but. You know, it's not a very heavy camera, so works quite well. Getting into Whitney Houston territory. Oh, yeah, for sure, with that sound. <laughs> we need to start a fun to get Mike and Nord wave because <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to start uh, opening it up to tips or something, man. Opening the streams to tips. Yeah, it does look very lush. The, the DX7 samples in this are fantastic. They're really, they've, they've nailed it. Really, it's super uh, expressive, so. It just feels so good to play. Especially that's with a bit of chorus. That's just dry. But the chorus, the effects in this are so good. Let's get lots of them. sound oh thank you very much josh james i have to do some performance streams again so i've been doing some sort of more demo hangs q a streams lately but yeah i'll do some performance streams where i'm just playing out as well oh thanks all things oh i'd love to come to canada quite a borealis that's uh it's definitely right up there on my travel list actually pretty much anywhere is right up there on my travel list post COVID now but um Uh, P. Frank says, what is the site with all the keyboards? I can't remember off the top of my head. If you Google it, you should find it. Um, if you look at like uh, keyboards, oh, I don't know, Google something like, you know, keyboard uh, database keybeds or something like that, and you'll probably find it. Um, 
Lucas says, I found mine sta- uh, main stage pretty buggy and incredibly tedious to program more complex splits and layers. Gig performer is more, much more powerful and flexible, however, it doesn't include any sounds. Oh, right, okay. I have not used gig performer, so I couldn't uh, offer any information on that. But yeah, main stage is, um, I found providing you run a pretty, you know, sort of tight ship with your, with your computer and, and leave everything fairly optimized, turn everything else off, don't have any, you know, dodgy plugins or cracks or anything like that. Uh, I found main stage to be pretty reliable, um, but yeah, you've got to have a pretty solid, solid system. Um, Josh James says, yeah, bring back some of those beat making streams. <laughs> Life saving during lockdown. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll do some of those. Do you mean the ones where I'm actually like, like writing or do you mean uh, the, the, the jamming ones when I was uh, jamming on some sort of broken beat stuff? Philippines is closer than Canada, man. <laughs> Cool. I have not been to the Philippines either. I will. Uh, I'll have to keep that one on the list. All right. Cool. Well, that's that's been. Uh, you know, I think it's been a pretty, pretty solid look at some of this stuff. Let's. Um, I'm just going to finish back on this. Um, this new felt piano. Where is it here? There we go. Felt upright XL, and. Uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. That's not the sound that I want. Let's uh, let's get back to that. Um, there we go. There it is. Yeah, if you've got any more questions, feel free to pop them in the chat, and I'll just have a bit of a noodle on this sound. If you've got any more questions, while I answer those, otherwise I'll see you all soon. Don't forget to. Uh, like this stream, subscribe if you haven't already, tell your friends. It'd be great to build up this channel and get a lot more of us uh, like-minded synthesizer, musician tech people here for a good hang. It's always fun. So yeah. jealous you've got a Moog one that's very cool I just had one on loan I didn't get to keep mine
Well, thank you all for tuning in today. It's lovely to spend an hour and a half with you all talking synths and everything else. Please tune into the next stream. Join the Discord if you haven't already. I'll put the link down below. Thank you, Reckington. No worries. Uh, you are very welcome. <laughs> Lucas. Oh, that's very kind of you, man. Thanks for tuning in. That's great. Ah, uh, Reckington. Ah, uh, well, there's always plenty of time to practice. Always plenty of time. No worries, Josh. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I uh, hope to see you on the next one. All right. Have a great day or evening, wherever you are in the world, and uh, I'll say cheerio for now. See you soon. <laughs>